And so many times we end up identifying who we are and how much we value with something or someone outside of ourselves because there is this part of us that still thinks, well, there's something wrong with me that didn't get me the love I needed. We are usually so afraid of being rejected by others when what truly hurts is our own rejection, our own abandonment. But I didn't know that and so often we don't know that because we still attach meaning to what happens to us, what happens in our lives. But it makes sense that we have those fears because we are still waiting for confirmation of our worth until we heal. It's almost like we have been waiting since childhood because all children need a sense of worthiness to be mirrored back to them in order for them to believe that they are worthy of love. So we end up judging our worth by how worthy our own parents treated us. And they did the same thing with their own parents. That's why this is a generational trauma. The more we crave love or attention is because those needs were never met. And so there is this void, there is this emptiness. And sometimes we try to fill that emptiness with a relationship or with things outside of us. And I remember when I didn't have those things, I would use maladaptive daydreaming, the never ending fake scenarios in my head, usually connected to love addiction um, because that was a way for me to cope with my surroundings and with my pain. It was a distraction, but it is true that it, it brings instant gratification, but it's preventing you from seeing the real problem. The problem is never the addiction. The problem is usually the pain that underlies that addiction. That's why I always tell my clients, you have to look at the pain that you feel, not as something that is against you, but as something that is there for you, to guide you. It is an opportunity for you to reclaim a part of yourself that you still don't own. That's why the experiences that we attract into our lives are never a reflection of what we deserve or our worth. They are simply showing us what we still need to heal. The universe is only showing you where you are still not totally anchored within yourself. And it took me so long to be able to get to where I am today, especially because I was very afraid of loneliness. Because when we decide to not abandon ourselves anymore, we have to stay present with our feelings, with our pain, with our insecurities, and that can be very overwhelming. So I remember thinking, well, I don't want to be alone, so I'll just put up with these people or with this behavior. That's why it is so important to have support. At the time, I did coaching with two amazing healers, Candice Vandell and Jean Peters. They are amazing. And even though I spent all of my money at the time, um, it was very special because I was finally being understood by someone who went through the same things that I did. And it was very important because it allowed me to feel confident in the knowing that I was doing the right thing by choosing myself and not other people. And so much of what I know today is because of them, all of the awareness, how to do in a child healing. And that was very important to me. I'm very grateful. And not only that, but it also helped me to develop my own style of healing and today help many others. You know, so often I find myself crying and feeling deep gratitude for all that I know and all that I have healed because I can only imagine where I would be and the pain that I would be enduring if it wasn't for the healing that I have done. But there is this quote that says, whatever you heal in yourself, you heal in your family line. So always remember that you are not only helping yourself, you are helping many others that never got their chance to heal. So you should be proud of yourself. And also remember that just because something is taking time, it doesn't mean that it's not happening.